Hi guys, this is a tutorial video on how to analyze your ECG strips that were obtained using the BioPack units. Uh, you'll be provided with data and question sheets that will require you to analyze your data. So you'll have two ways to analyze your data and this is one way. And this video will show you how to use the, the BioPack reader for your analysis. And the first thing you would have to do is download the reader. So you have to go to the BioPack website and I will give you that address. Um, so that you can do that. You have to register and log, log in to be able to download. But once you do that, you actually need to download version 3.7. So if I go into, uh, into this window, um, it's going to tell me I can uh, download 3.7. So once you get there, it's probably going to ask you to log in or, or register. So you need to register and then log in to be able to download it. Okay. So once you have that downloaded, this is what it looks like. And we need to open up a lesson to be able to do anything with our analysis. So I'm going to open up, I've got a test les lesson here on my desktop, right there, it's named Jared. And what you see is the entire run. So. Um, what we had you do in lab was we had you run the ECG with the person seated twice and then we had you do deep breathing and then we had the person do exercise and uh, we took a reading right after that. The way that the lesson is designed is that the person actually uh, starts supine and so you'll see uh, the marker here, the first marker is for the supine measurement. The next marker is for seated the next is for deep breathing, and then the last marker is for exercise. Now the BioPack software is going to put those in automatically. And so um, let's take a look at the entire spread here of the whole run. And you're going to see some kind of interesting stuff here. So first of all, the top window is the ECG window. And the bottom one is the heart rate, right along here. So we can um, take a look and compare heart rate to the ECG tracing. And we see some trends here. So uh, before we even go into the, the whole analysis, we can look at some trends. So take a look at heart rate and notice that in a supine position, that the heart rate is fairly low. Then when the person stood up and measurements were taken again, their heart rate went up. Their heart rate rate actually went up quite a bit. So here the heart rate is below 75 and then it goes above 100. So just getting up from a supine position. We're not going to see that, of course, because we did not uh, have the person lie down first. We did uh, two, two readings uh, with the person seated. And then the next readings we did, um, well, the next readings that were done here is the deep breathing. And it looks from this um, as though they only did three sets of deep breaths and they only marked one. So this is the start of inhale and this is the start of exhale. Um, and then this is post-exercise, this one right here. And so let's take a look at this trend of heart rate. And so in the supine position, we can see that the heart uh, is pretty relaxed and it's, it's a very low rate. And then the person gets into the seated position, heart rate goes up, then it comes back down, and then it starts to trend back upward again. Then on deep breathing, uh, it looks like on the inhalation, the heart rate actually speeds up. And then on exhalation, it slows down. So they did three, uh, a series of three inhales and exhales. And then post-exercise, of course, the heart rate is at its highest point, And it looks like it's somewhere between 125 and 150. Now, if you want to see the grid lines, you can just click on Show Grid. Um, I'm going to hide the grid, the grid for now. And I want to show you a couple of other things here. So this is the entire run for the experiment. It goes from 0 seconds to about 136 seconds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scale so that I'm only looking at um, one part of the exercise. So we'll start with the supine. 
So I know that the supine test went from 0 to 20 seconds. So I can choose, I'm just going to do a single left click here on the scale for seconds. I'm going to run it from 0 to 20. So now I can just analyze that part of the test. But there's a, there's a lot of cycles here, so I think I want to uh, focus in maybe on four really good cycles. So let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, that's about mm, five seconds worth, four seconds worth. So why don't we change the scale and go from zero to four seconds. One, two, three, four. So I have four really nice um, cycles here. So again, I can show the grid if I want. And these are the large boxes. Here's a large box. And the way I know that it's that it goes from point A to one. So this is point two seconds right here. All right. And then the small boxes, if you were doing measurements off of this software, if you just had a paper um, strip, you might want to know what the measurements are of the small boxes. So here's how we use this uh, software. If uh, we've got two channels here, we have the EKG channel and we have the heart rate channel. When you want to do measurements in EKG, um, you want to have the channel chosen up here for EKG. Makes sense, right? And you want to choose this tool right here. Okay, this is the I beam tool. And what the I beam tool is going to do for you is it's going to highlight certain parts of the trace. So let's say I wanted to know how long it took for the P wave. I just highlight it and I go to delta T and that tells me the time. So it's 0 0.075 seconds long. If I go to the P to P measurement, this is actually measuring the high point and the low point of the wave and then it subtracts to give me the amplitude or the millivolts. And if I go to BPM, it's actually telling me that if I was between two R waves with that selection that it would be 800 beats per minute. And so that that doesn't really make sense. I would want to use that if I measured between the R waves. So that tells me at this particular, between these two cycles, uh, it is almost 71 beats per minute. So that's how we, uh, we use that. That's a great tool. So you can measure uh, all sorts of things. You can measure PR interval, QT interval, you can measure the SD segment if you want. Uh, you can measure the duration of the QRS complex, the duration of the P wave, the duration of the T wave. You can measure this right here, which is actually the PR segment as opposed to the PR interval. Um, you can also measure ventricular systole. So you want to go to about a third down on the T wave. Okay, or you want to, or you can measure ventricular diastole, how long those take. So that's how you, you do the measurements. Now, if you wanted a copy of this graph, all you'd have to do is come up here and hit copy graph, and then open up your word processing software. I've got Word opened up, and I just paste it right in there. And then it actually puts it in as a picture. So then you can do whatever you want with the picture. You can move it around. You can make it larger. And I chose to copy it with the grid lines so that if I wanted to make my own um, measurements offline, not using the software, I could do that. And some of you may want to do that uh, if you don't want to bother with the software. So let's go back to the software now and um, let's change the timing again. Let's go back to the original timing that we saw. So it was about 130 seconds, 37 seconds. And so you're going to be filling, it, filling in some data sheets. Well, let's take a look at what your data sheets are going to be looking for, uh, what they look like as well. And so the first thing you're going to be looking at is heart rate. And so what they want you to do is they want you to take the heart rate in, in eight, uh, excuse me, five different places. Uh, the first one is the supine segment. So they're calling each of the different exercises segments. 
uh, we didn't do supine so just we'll put in seated here and we'll take the measurements from uh, segment one which was seated segment two was seated uh, segment three uh, we can just choose uh, three different spots to do start of inhale start of exhale and then after exercise and then we want to measure the ventricular systole and diastole the way I showed you and we're going to measure that seated not supine and after exercise and then we have another chart that takes a lot of different measurements we're going to be me measuring waves uh, we're going to measure duration and that's delta T so that's the time and also amplitude and that's the PP that I was talking about and then we'll measure intervals in duration and we'll measure segments as well now they say segment one and what they're referring to is the supine test but we're actually going to use the seated test so you can use the first seated test the first segment and you're going to take three different measurements and then then they want you to take one measurement of the post exercise and we're going to compare those and then we'll have a bunch of questions to answer and then that'll be it so that was your introduction to how to use the biopack software uh, the reader portion of the biopack software so that you can analyze your data rather easily okay so long guys